with inventor Brenda Schwader, and we're talking about art-inspired jewelry. This is a beautiful piece, Brenda. Thank you, Katie. You're welcome. This one, I am so one of my favorite art, uh, artists of all time is Alexander Calder. And although he was an American sculptor, he also did over five, 1,500 pieces of jewelry in his Is that lifetime. right? Yeah, a lot all of people right. don't know that. Um, and it's just gorgeous stuff, and that just it was it's primitive, but not you know elegant all at the same time. So definitely, I, like I love this piece that you created. Is this based on one of his designs? It is. It kind of takes a lot of his motifs and kind of blends them together. He was really big into spirals, and he was big into leaves as well. And what I really like about this one is that the uh, the link is actually all built into the bail that attaches it to the next one. So it's all about the connections here, and I just love it. Love the sophistication of it. Yeah. Yeah, great idea. Okay, well, mm -hmm. let's get started. Okay, great. So it's actually three different links, but we're going to make just the one because all that differs is that basically one has the hook in it, one has the female end that, that the hook will go into, and then the others are just um, just the links that go all the way around. So, okay. Yeah. So what I really like about this one is that this is a way we can use really hefty wire. And if it's too hard on your hands to do silver, grab some aluminum from the floral shop. Um, oh, good you know, idea. The floor area of your craft store. So all you're going to do is basically we need to trap this wire around here. And as with all of my templates, we have exactly what you need for this. 15 inches of 12 gauge wire. Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're basically going to just trap this between here. Let's see. There we go. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of pull it, push it down here. Oh, looks like the jig is not done. This is how we get it to be stable onto here. Let's grab this. Okay, so we're all ready to go. And then go ahead and grab that and, t and uh, tighten it between the swivel lock and that first peg. Okay, so you're just locking it in place. Locking it in place. You can see I'm really grabbing that and it's not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to, to bring this one over and above this uh, oval peg right here and this is just making just a curve right here we could do this by hand but since we have this peg why not go sure. ahead and build it into all of them at the same time then I'm going to take and this is where I'm building this double back here and this is what was making that you know that connector all in one bringing it back up here and and bringing it around there to make that tip come back make it a little bit more like a leaf this is also where I get back in here with my, my bent nose pliers and I just grab this and just make sure it's all in the same plane so that the form is actually working um, as it should. Okay. Okay. Bring this back down here. This is where I would go around this to make that, that female part of the clasp, but right now we're just going to do the regular one. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this all the way up here. What I'm doing, Katie, is I'm making what I call a reverse spiral. And watch, just, just watch this. So I'm going around here to the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and trim this off right here. Let's see if I can get a nice flush cut going the right way. There we go. And then to get the spiral, I'm actually going to build it and fill it in. And how I'm doing that is I'm just going to grab my chain nose pliers. And I'm going to go kind of from the top here. I'm keeping the bottom layers of the spiral formed right to the side of here so that they don't come in and they, they keep that outer ridge. And I'm just going to try to just, can you see that? Oh, how yeah. easy that is to do? Especially with this is um, working with the aluminum wire. And there it is, basically. We still have that outer shape intact, but we've used the rest of that wire to make the inner spiral. Nice. Yeah. So, well, let's go ahead and take this off of here. But before we change the orientation, I just want to grab um, Calder. He worked, and you can see this is pretty wide wire, but he really flattened his wire a lot and um, gets what I call faceting into the wire. I guess it's just kind of my own term. But I'm just going to basically try to make that, that flattened here. Okay. I'm not carrying, this is a really beat up thing and I want You like, could use any the, hammer. Yeah, any hammer, because you want that kind of beat up, getting the corners in there. Now I'm going right up to here. And you can get the back too, but for the our purposes here. What I'll do is I'll just trim this short. I'm just going to go right up to where it intersects right here. Okay. And put and just take off that little again making a nice flush cut. Okay. Right there. 
And then all I do is to keep that, that orientation going the right way, I'm going to push that one backward or frontward, depending on which side you think is the best. Is the front. Right? Um, I like it to kind of go away, so this is my front, so I'm going to make that loop go to the back. Okay. Yeah. So now let's make the clasp bend. Okay. Great. So um, what I'd like to do is, let's see here, we're using a little bit more wire for for the female end because it's got one other loop to go through, uh, go around, but we're going to start it basically that same way. We're just going to kind of just bend this around a little bit here and get it in there. This is a little bit more of a tight fit because it is 12 gauge. Um, and then we're going to grab this, tighten it here. You can always see that wire responding. It makes me excited every time. <laughs> it's one of those It's things. the little things it's in the, life. It's just me. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to go up and around here as we did before, doing everything the same for the regular link, okay? But as I said with the last one, this is just like working butter, I'm telling you. It's just so soft. Is that this is that female, we're building that, and that's what that's another thing I like about the jig is you can build bales right in. This I want to be especially um, cognizant of, though, is making these on the same plane because I can end up with a teardrop there instead of a oh. circle. So I just want to make sure that's pulled nice and tight. Then, as with the last one, I just go around and make that spiral again. I love the spiral. Yeah, that's really great. So let me go ahead and show you the male version. Okay. The male end, okay. Grab that and let's, whoa, lots to do here. Let's get this done and off of here. It's always the last one to go. I know. <laughs> and again, we're going to start with just a little bit more here. So this is going to be the hook end of the this necklace. This is the male end, the hook end, yeah. Okay. And again, tighten this on. This is what takes the most time. That's <laughs> about that right. Tightening. Yeah. Okay. Then just quickly, again, back here, over here. By this time, you're like a pro at this because you've done it a couple times to get all these links just right. Back around and down. You skip that female part. And this is where you start, you know, again, you do your spiral. But what you're going to do, okay, this would be a lot prettier, uh, is you're going to grab this. I love these bent nose again for this. And then just bring it up, this little um, lead in here, and then just bring it up a little bit to create that um, that little slanty, oh, okay. that jaunty angle in the hook. Sure. And while it's on here, I always like it just kind of like to measure it and use this as a gauge here. And it's it's right there, so why not make that cut, you know, right at, at, right okay. at the moment. Sure. So when we grab all these off of here and start building the necklace. Well, is there anything you need to do to finish the ends, or do you just leave them cut? Absolutely. Katie, you think of everything. <laughs> so... <laughs> it's my, can you tell that's my least favorite part I about know, making jewelry is all, is all that stuff. Yeah, so... Um, what I would do is just take, you know, just a little needle file. You're going to want to keep your elbows nice and close so that you're actually making some movement. And I just like to just kind of just give it a little one-two, bring my finger over. Just knock the edges just, off. Just knock the edges off. It doesn't need to be anything real fancy. Um, and um, do that to the middle one as well. And we didn't do this, you know, we didn't do the spiral The here, spiral. But basically we would just, you know, to this one, what we did is just, you know, give it a little bit of a knockoff here and then... And then yeah, now let's show thing. attaching that because I think that part is a little confusing. Okay, great. Does it go this way? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Nope, it goes Either the other way. way. <laughs> it is confusing. I know. Yeah. So you can see I always like to work with it flat, okay? And this just helps me figure out the orientation. And then I'm, I'm making sure all of my tips are going the same way. Um, and then I'm just going to, I think I was using this one, and bend that out again. And then I'm just going to hook it in here, and you'll know if it's fighting you. If it doesn't look like it's easy, it's wrong. Okay. Um, and then just bend that right back in there till it's 
Nice. That's nice and snug, and you've got your next one on. It reminds me of a Greek key, you know? It does, kind yeah, of. Yeah, it didn't really think does. Of that until you said it. That's it really does. Yeah. And you're showing some different types of metals here. It looks like you have some options as far as what type of wire to use. Yes, with the silver, you can do any kind of silver. I was using aluminum, but you can use silver, silver plate, whatever. Um, you know, I'm a big steel girl. Yes. I love the steel and I love the depth of that. But if you're a gold, you know, gold person, you can work with jewelers, bronze brass you know real gold if that's your thing um it's just it's the jig i said does not discriminate for metals okay and there are some other options for the design too that you can do yeah absolutely you know calder did a lot of different kind of connections that were very similar and so um you can do that or you can do one with a leaf that you're coming off both ends as well i love this project thank you so much brenda thanks katie mm -hmm.